Andrew Lejeune here with your Asian Racing Review, joined as always by Michael Cox, the editor of the Asian Racing Report. And I come from a big weekend uh, in Hong Kong, Australia and Japan. That's where we'll start as well. It was the Japanese 1000 Guineas, the offer show. What a win. It's exciting stuff. Uh, Liberty Island came in with a whole heap of hype around this 1.6 favourite. Uh, exceeded expectations pretty incredible performance sat right back in the field and of course this is a with a view to the oaks as well and stepping up to 2400 meters like th this filly had already you know not just put the riding on the wall on debut she ran the fastest ever recorded 600 meter split in jra history uh on debut as a two-year-old filly so there isn't you know one or one of uh, the two-year-old fillies race group one uh now yeah, has come back taken another step the way she did it you know uh, david morgan spoke to uh the the stable this week and look she's a natural they've mm. said that uh he and the, the jockey yuga kawada have said that she's just stepped out and seemed to know what she was doing that she's taken a, a sit back a little bit further in the field and then rattled off that trademark final burst yeah extraordinary easily. extraordinary performance she was beaten on her second star as a two odd then as you say came out and won that uh, the group one um at uh, han shin uh and she's out of that uh, really good australian mare as well yankee rose who was trained by david van dyke yeah yeah yankee rose she was a top filly uh won the size produce for zach purton all those years ago uh i think placed or or, or ran behind winks in a in a cox plate uh really top line filly and one of many uh top fillies from around the world with great buys lines and but mostly great racetrack performance mm. you know, yankee rose wasn't an expensive filly as a yearling but she really put her down on the track and had a race record and these are the sort of fillies that at katsumi yoshida is buying for northern farm and that we're seeing a lot of these top prospects uh produced from yeah well, that's another segment completely about the success they've had buying these broodmares from Australia, from Europe as well, and what they've gone on to produce. Um, leads us into this weekend. I should probably say as well that she looks like she'll be a match for the Colts, but they're going for the Oaks, aren't they? Yeah, and that, it was an interesting uh, comments there that the, the reason they well stick to the village, exclusively revealed in Asian Racing Report that she well stick to her own sex. Uh, which is a rarity for Phillies to go against the Colts, but the Northern Farm have four or five prospects mm. there they want to make into stallions, so they'll just focus on the on the Oaks. Uh, next step, she probably would. I'd be very worried if she did uh, step across. Uh, this weekend, the Satsuki show, the Colts do go around in the 2000 Guineas. Uh, Sol Orion's the favourite there. Damian Lane is from Australia. He's uh, over there for a an extended stint, I think two months, Nelly. He's uh he's got a good ride in the races uh as well. So one to look out for. Uh look for the coverage on Asian Racing Report. All right, well we'll have to wait till later in the year maybe for uh, for her to go against uh, the boys. Uh Australia, day two of the championships at uh, Royal Randwick. We had the match race between Animo, um, trained by James Cunnings and uh, Dubai Honor for William Haggis, as it turned out, although they sort of top of the straight, they thought, here we go. But it didn't last for very long. Dubai it was just too good. Well, he was, and he was favourite. Yeah. I mean, I William Haggis after the race in his post-race comments almost sounded like a, two things, almost apologetic <laughs> for like his horse just absolutely wiping the floor with Australia's best middle distance horse. This just got smashed. Yeah. And not, to, and then de, so apologetic and defensive. Then he was defensive. Oh, my horse is a pretty good horse. Mm. It's like but he is. Yeah, yeah, he's a pretty good horse. But uh, the tears of the Australian racing fans were falling all around him. Like, yeah, you got a pretty good horse, but this horse has won nine Group Ones, mate. Yeah, it's, the sky's falling in. Now, I'm not of the opinion that the sky's falling in. I didn't expect. A, it's, it's what I expected. You know, he was going better, and he's he might just be a better horse. And that was just a horse race. Mm. It's okay. Yeah. And um, look, it leaves a question of like, Animo, what next? So, you know, the, the in the in the post-race analysis, um, James Cummings, good off and trainer, clinging on to the idea that Animo could go to Royal Ascot. It was funny in the, in the media reporting, the same quotes from James Cummings had uh, Ray Thomas from the Daily Telegraph reporting 
he won't be going or he probably won't be going. And Chris Roots, more of a former colleague of mine, Chris Roots, more of a glass half full kind of guy. He was saying maybe he will go. Um, but if you actually read the comments, you'd say he doesn't really know whether he's going or not. And that the horse will stay in training though. Right. I think that's good news. Absolutely. Yeah. And right. I, I think it's like uh, one of the things Australian racing has been um, criticised for overall. And I think a contributing factor to the middle distance ranks being so thin, you know, the, and, and not it's just not high quality mm. in Australian racing. We see time after time. Horses coming out of, out of Europe with Group 2 form that are, are good enough to win multiple Group 1s in Australia, yeah. win our biggest races. And you have to think that one of the factors there is our obsession with precocity, speed. But look, one, one point I would like to make about overall and the reaction to Animo um, just being walloped in a horse race and, and the sort of hand-wringing that, might come with that is that okay england have got better middle distance horses and europe's got better middle distance horses i wouldn't swap industries with them i wouldn't swap i wouldn't swap structure and prize money no. maybe you can't have both maybe you can't have records broken at the easter yearling sales that week for two-year-olds and everyone wanting to to race horses and having such an amazing um ex, you know impact and 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 connection with society with so many racehorse owners in Australia and the returns that you can get from racing a horse, mm. maybe you can't, you know. Commercial success generally in any field doesn't equal quality. Yeah. yeah. No. You know, uh, Katy Perry's got more money than Radiohead. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right comparison, <laughs> but if she was into classical music, you know, you wouldn't know who Katy Perry was. So. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. Next big thing in Australia. There you go. Yeah. Australia, they pr they produce pop starlet horse racing, horse racing, uh, a, race horses. Sorry, a, a slightly uh, different tax taken. If he does go to Royal Ascot, then surely he's going for the mile. The two thousand meters, the, the Prince of Wales Stakes, always just, looks to be. Uh, he might be. They might think he's a better two thousand meter horse here. I think it's just a matter of competition. The competition at two thousand meters is just too tough. Yeah. Um, you know, what Australian horses do have is high cruising speed. This horse can put himself in a race. I think in Queen Anne Stakes, I hope they do. Yeah. What's there to lose? Absolutely. You know, well, there's a lot to gain. Yeah. But I mean, he's already lost his reputation. He just got smashed. So they, they can't really lose now, right? No. But maybe put them in a position where they feel more emboldened to go there. There's less risk because if he runs in a Queen Anne Stakes and, and, and doesn't win, well, I don't think he's going to lose value, but he, there is a lot to gain and and a lot of pride to to gain back from Australia if he goes over. All right, so ball's still up in the air as far as he's concerned. Uh, we talked last week about the potential for uh, Chief Executive of the Hong Kong Jockey Club, Winfred Engelbert is maybe being at Royal Randwick on the weekend, and he was. And he was, and it looks like he might have uh, scored a win there by recruiting the Queen Elizabeth Stakes winner, Dubai Honour, to come and contest the QE2 in Hong Kong. Uh report by Chris Roots, who we mentioned earlier in the Sydney Morning Herald, said that uh, Winfred and Gilbert Brescius uh, was, well, spoke to Chris and, and said that, you know, that they could be looking at a collaborative approach into recruiting horses across to, to Hong Kong's um, Champions Day meeting, which is something I flagged back in 2014. I, I just think that meeting from Hong Kong, it doesn't deserve the Champions Day tag and it's international promotion. It has never been in the last 10 years what they've wanted it to be, mm. what it's, and, and um, look, while Sydney has grown in that time, Sydney is actually, the championships have been invented during that period. I think it makes sense and it's about time. Uh, that somehow, but I mean, it, the onus is on Hong Kong here. Yeah, like why should Sydney help Hong Kong get horses? You know, and the way that Peter Volandis operates for New South Wales is pretty simple. He's gonna get what he can for New South Wales. I think Hong Kong can take advantage of the fact that New South Wales has grown in popularity and, attra and attracted some international interest, but it might take more than just a collaborative approach. I think it's gonna take, uh, some money on the table, some bonuses, some sort of structure to say, you know, for the winners or the, 
the place getters from the Queen Elizabeth Stakes at Ramwick or the Doncaster oh the week before to come and contest the races in uh, Hong Kong. It's, it's the Champions Mile that really needs help. It's always a small field and lacks international involvement. But we've, we've had this before, this is going back a few years, but we had the Global Sprint Challenge. We had the Asian Mile Challenge as well, which slowly died on the vine. Do they, do they need a, you know, a rethink as far as that's concerned? Well, if it's going to happen, there's, a, there's an argument to say, well, those things were tried and they were proven not to work and they'd still be in existence if they did work. If it is going to happen, Winfred's the man to make it happen. He's basically the boss of everything other than New South Wales Racing, mm. Hong Kong Jockey Club. They've got the funds, uh, Asian Racing Federation and International Federation of Horse Racing Authorities. He's the chairman of all, well, he's the CEO of the Hong Kong Jockey Club and the chairman of Asian Racing and the uh, IFHA. If he can't make it happen, nobody can. All right, and so Dubai, and I have been to Sha Tin once before as well, a couple of years ago, he finished fourth to Love's Only You. Um, that was the, uh, the December meeting in the Cup. So hopefully he goes he goes back and see what he can do. Speaking of Hong Kong, a couple of Group 2s on the weekend. We had the the Sprint Cup as a matchup again between Lucky Swainess and Wellington and the Chairman's Trophy mm. as well. California Let's Australia. take a look at this Sprint race. I mean, from Lucky Swainess, I don't think he's uh, done anything there to further or, or detract from his course. I think it was, uh, he, he's got... Wellington, he's a former foe. Mm. He's got, he's his got him covered. Yeah. Um, you know, just looking at, at that, you know, a bit more talk about travel from Manfred Mann there in the post race. You see the Kinnan maybe up to 1600 metres. A little bit of talk in the Australian media here about Lucky Swainess and the possibility that he could attract an Everest slot. Uh, let's wait and see. The mile, uh, California Spangle, did what was required as the favourite. A little bit of chat there about not being that impressive. Look, it wasn't the sort of win where you'd look at it and think that he's going to get the better of Golden 60 next time. Uh, a few question marks about the maybe the tactics. Um, Zach not taking these races, not electing to lead and and really uh, dominate with a, with a strong tempo from in front. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's... It, the, what I'm excited about just overall in Hong Kong with these horses is that there's enough of a glut of talent at the top level now that let's just say a Wellington, he, he can't get, he, if they, they're both running their races, they've met two or three times, he can't beat him. It forces connections to look at other options overseas. This is when we do see horses travel. It's not an option. It's not like when the top horse will travel or not. When we see the Japanese horses going around the world, it's usually because they know they have to race in the group one against the horse. They know they can't beat. So they go looking for, for other options. And hopefully we see that with a few of these. Wellington, and it could be California Spangle as well. He's a, he's a horse with some versatility, some early speed. I wouldn't mind seeing him with some blinkers on back in trip actually at a sprint trip. Mm. Yeah. So. I don't think California Spangle had to dominate that race on the weekend. He did what he had to do as a warm up for the, the Champions Mile. So um, I can perfectly understand why he didn't force the pace and uh, sat back and, and got the win all the same. That was the important thing to uh, to score there. So um, what else are we looking forward to? We've talked about the Satsuki Show coming up um, this weekend, which will also give us a, a nice lid in as far as the, the Tokyo Yushun rankings. Are yeah, we've got a, a great, um, very popular part of our website is the Tokyo Yushin rankings where we rank the uh, the top derby prospects in Japan one through 18. It's a great way to follow the, the you know these top prospects going through. Obviously Liberty Island won't be in the, the next list mm. given the, the indications from the stable but this race on the weekend will really sort that out. Also at Asian uh, Racing Report I really want to point out a story from Breno Bryan about the, uh, the government inquiry into online bookmaking uh, last week, which drew a lot of attention from the, the grilling of like, look, we all loved it, the popcorn out sort of stuff, bookmakers there. And um, I thought the headline from Bren was perfect, tough day on the stand. We love seeing the bookmakers squirm, but this is an exceptional piece from Bren, great analysis. And it's stuff that you won't read anywhere else. You know, we're independent. We don't take, at Asian Racing Report, we don't take money from corporate bookmakers and sponsorship. A lot of our rivals do. And there's not much incentive to write uh, a deep dive analysis 
in, into what happened there last week in Canberra. But what I would say is as much as it was thoroughly enjoyable to see corporate bookmakers representatives just get absolutely eviscerated in a public inquiry. Some of the points that Bren makes there are, are really important um, to get through, especially the lack of representation from racing officials there. I think Racing New South Wales and Racing Victoria uh, left their submissions late. They weren't represented at the inquiry. They denied a chance. So, so you can read about it in this piece. But look, I just thought it was it was really disappointing uh, to see, given the importance of what this is about. This isn't just about, but most of the attention has been on uh, winning gamblers being banned or limited from getting bets on. And that's great. We want, like, I mean, it's great to see this scrutiny. And what we want to see is bookmakers held to account. Sure, but there was more to it than that. And, and there are some really, so we, yeah, regulation in that form. But regulation in any form is, is a, it can come in many, many ways. And uh, yeah, I'd really encourage all the readers and our viewers to go and have a look at the piece there from Brent on the site. All right, so dive into that for some more details. It may well be that there's some, uh, some more water to flow under the bridge um, as far as that's concerned uh, as well. I think that'll probably just take us away for this week. Yeah, Michael, thanks as always. Thank you. All right, so like and subscribe. Follow us on all the, uh, the major social channels as well. And keep tuning in for more from Asian Racing Review.